good morning, or uh, at least this morning when I'm shooting this, uh, good evening, whatever time you happen to watch this, set on the screen. Um, Alright, so welcome to just another episode of Just My Thoughts. I'm your host, Lawrence. Um, this morning, pardon me, I'm still a little off this morning. It's, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like 5.50 in the morning. I just been exhausted from last night. Um, Right. Yeah, still. Alright, so uh this morning wanted to after doing my last video I wanted to do something kinda similar. I think my last video was like the downside of uh the downside to being a thinker. Something the title was something around that. Um so this time I decided to do the downside of being uh, creative, right? And, uh, I was thinking about this yesterday, and unfortunately, got home late, and you wake up the next morning, and it's like, alright, where are your ideas? You know, I had to organize yesterday. Um, so, let me just, you know, do my thing. Alright, so, uh, I remember years ago I saw this video uh, about Jordan Peterson. He was talking to this guy on stage and he was talking about uh, creativity. Um, it was actually pretty good. I think it was like two hours long, maybe a little longer, I'm not sure. But it was the whole thing was about creativity. And he was talking about how some of the uh, restraints of being creative creative um he was saying that basically if you're creative if you don't do something creative um basically you want to try to model you want to try to whatever it is you do for a living you want to try to mold that around your creative personality and the reason for that is it's huge. You can't really just kind of ignore it. Um, it is a part of you. Like it just, it pretty much just goes down to your core. It's not a um, super a superficial thing by any stretch of the imagination. And he was basically saying, once you ignore that, you can wither and die on the vine, as he uh, put it actually a pretty good metaphor because um that has definitely been my experience there have been several times where just throughout life you know um i have not been able to express my creativity in ways that i would like to you know um and it it has been very dark in those moments. Um, I would not say I was suicidal uh, because I don't know, I guess by basic definition, you actually gotta think about killing yourself to be a suicide, be suicidal. Um, I never really thought about killing myself, um, but it's more like life just doesn't seem worth living um and i know you might be like well what's the difference the difference is i'm not actively thinking about killing myself but it's a very much what is the point of being here type of experience um sorry i'm still a little foggy still trying to get up um but anyway, I don't want to go. I'm not trying to hit this guy. He's trying to, trying to uh, depress us like early in the morning. Um, sorry. 
Yeah, I'm not trying to go dark on this. Um, just trying to put that out there. If anybody, I mean, nobody watches this. Uh, this is more so therapeutic for me, if anything. Um, but if anybody happens to see this and you're creative, yeah, you should not ignore that impulse. And if you know somebody who's in creative, um, you might want to pass this along. Yeah, you definitely shouldn't ignore that. Uh, like I said, it can go very dark. Um, let me see what else. Lost my train of thought there. Um, okay, now I'm doing dead air. Creative. Oh, okay. All right, so if you've ever taken, like, say, the big five, um, personality tests where like they break down basically different dimensions of your personality so there's I don't even remember them all there's like um, neuroticism um, industrialness um, there's like five different aspects and each aspect is broken down into two dimensions I don't recall all of them at the moment but the one um, for creativity is called open openness to experience um, which I think is uh, it's called openness right and openness breaks down to openness to experience and openness to the intellect if I'm not mistaken and um, it's a great name for it because openness definitely describes it I rank it's been probably like seven eight years since I took it but I want to say I remember it was the highest of all uh, you know the whole five of them it was definitely the highest um, both of those scores the openness to experience the openness to the idea was the highest in relation to anything else like I had high marks on a lot of stuff except for neuroticism my neuroticism um, is extremely low and I believe that is it I suspect I've, I'm wanted to write Jordan Peterson to kind of confirm this but I suspect that openness to experience and um, neuroticism sort of counterbalancing each other so if you're high on one it necessarily puts you on the other it kind of like like a scale kind of evens out because my neuroticism is like it was ridiculously low it was like four percent or something like that um and basically what it means is i'm not really one to drill to dwell on negativity um like i said like i mentioned before like if I don't do my creativity or express it somewhere, it can get kind of dark, but I don't necessarily get negative. And um, that can be a, a quite a distinction, um, but I'm not gonna go too, in, too far into that. Um, but openness, I rank somewhere in like the 90, it's like 92 or 94 percentile um it's like i want to say it's like uh openness to experience i want to say it was like 92 percent and openness to ideas is like 96 and i don't i don't i have to search to see if i can find that paperwork i know i kept it I don't uh, know exactly where it is, but I know I kept it because I thought it was pretty important. Um, and basically what that means is in a room of 100 people, I would be more open than like 96 people in the room. So like that's extremely, extremely high on a creative scale, right? Um, and another thing in his video, he commented that when talking to someone who's high in openness, 
and this this is more I guess on the openness to intellect part. Um, basically, the openness to this to experience is sort of like you're more op you're more interested in aesthetics and art, which definitely I am. I'm an artist myself. Um, but the openness to ideas, openness to the intellect, is when when speaking to someone, and I I found this recently within the um, like when I look back, I can definitely see it starting in my early twenties. But I recently I can definitely see it much much more when speaking to someone someone um when you are open to experiences you will always turn the conversation to a discussion of ideas right um or concepts the way i think about it but yes you will always do that and yeah and that's something i do um it, it, it's something I do and I can definitely see it more and more and it's something that just sort of I love it but it's a little bit of a pain in the ass at the same time because like I said I rank in like the upper 90th percentile oh, I'm sorry lower 90, 90th percentile and um there just aren't many people who I come across that are interested in that. Like, I mean, to be honest, there are like two people that I know that really will like sit down and will talk about stuff. And one of the people, I'm not even sure that he's all that interested in the different ideas, but he does, I can tell he has high high openness it's just i don't think his is as high as mine so like some of the ideas he's or it could be it could be just he's just not interested in those ideas i'll say it like that he could just not be interested in those ideas um and so some stuff we can discuss and other stuff he's just not interested um and then my other other buddy he's pretty open like he he's down to discuss whatever and i don't know it comes down to personal taste i guess um because even if you're high openness it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be interested in the same concepts you know um it's sort of like saying hey i like for example fantasy movies well let's say gangster movies i'm not a gangster guy but let's say gangster movies right one guy might be like, oh, man, I'm all about Scarface. And I don't, I don't really mess around with too many of them. And then other guys like, no, man, I, I don't care about Scarface. But I'm all about Goodfellas. Oh, man, I love Goodfellas, you know. So you can just have different personal tastes. Um, but, yeah, I found, like, so many, so many people are just not interested in discussing concepts. Um it does make it does make the world pretty lonely i can't lie like it's um i mean maybe that's partly why i do this too like so i can get some of this um so that i can express some of this and like just sort of get it out because if you knew like in my mind the thoughts I be having, you know, um, and like even my wife is just kind of like, I do not want to hear that shit you got going on in there. Like, I mean, of course those aren't her words, but those are her thoughts expressed very adamantly. Like, no, <laughs> and yeah, my my wife is just not interested in that, which is funny in a sense because i consider my wife to be on the creative side um not as high as i am but clearly on the creative side i 
I wish I can get her to open up a little more. She, it's hard. Once you, anyway, um, get sidetracked. So yeah, that that's a downside. Like when you're so creative in a world that is not, it's a very big downside. And um, I don't know. Like I'm sure there are certain groups you can join. Or places where you live, where more creative people live, like uh, I think Oregon, like Portland, Portland is supposed to be kind of high in creative types. Um, but there are like certain areas where they tend to gravitate towards, or like if you go to like maybe an art district or something like that, um, you can find people of a similar type and then can vibe, I guess. Um, that might that might help out personally. I myself am highly introverted, so uh, I tend not to I tend not to do that. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing. Like you, you can have different types of creatives. So even though I'm on a creative introverted side. There are more extroverted creatives, you know, like take for example, I almost hate to use this example, but take for the example, uh, Kanye West, jackass, uh, guys, highly creative and definitely more on the extroverted side, a bit of a dumbass if you ask me, but whatever, uh, you know, so there's just, there's, there's a whole spectrum of creatives I mean um, so trying to find your tribe in that sense it's probably a good idea but like I said I'm more introverted and uh, not really the social type and um, yeah that that is probably something I should put more effort into um, I've been considering that lately it's doubtful that I will, but I've been considering it. Um, but yeah, you being highly creative, the world can, the world definitely feels like it's not really, it's not really for you. Um, or at least that's that's how I feel. Um, because it's just it's just not it's lonely like there's not a lot of people um like you around like even if you find other creative people there's not going to be a humongous amount of people so you got to kind of just find your own tribe and make it work but yeah it's it's very lonely um because see the the response I've gotten from the outside world, from like the people outside of myself, for the most part has been like, we don't care. We don't, we're not interested in whatever the fuck you're talking about. Keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> like the one, the one guy I work with, <clears throat> I talk to him like on a daily basis. And like, he's like, dude, you should go talk to a therapist because he's like, you, you're not normal as he put it uh and this is basically because i'm just tr trying to discuss ideas with him all day and he's if i'm on the opener scale this guy is more on the other side of the scale like he's definitely a lot more closed-minded um and of course the scale has to counterbalance so if you have people more on the side of like super open as you go down there's going to be people more on the side of super close you know so as my worldview is so open his is so close and it's like looking at your opposite and yeah he's just like dude you you you're not normal and that's what he says you're not normal you need to talk to somebody i'm like dude i am 
not normal, I guess, is uh, one way of saying it. I mean, and I guess there's some truth to that, but to me, I don't think he's normal either. Like, if I'm on the, I'm on the one end of the scale and I'm not normal, if you're on the other end of the scale, you're not normal either. Like, the average is normal. But anyway, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so, yeah, that that is definitely a downside. Like, you just, there's not a lot of people. Uh, 6.10, I'll give another 10 minutes. Um, so, let me think, what else? Um... Let me tell you about a little bit about my inner world. So, I told you I'm highly introverted. Inside my mind, see how to explain this. Okay, I can't even explain all that goes on in there. Um, there's a lot going on in there. Uh, but there's this inner world, right? Where <clears throat> things are juxtaposed, all right? That's something I've noticed my mind will do um, often. It will juxtapose things. So by that, I mean... It takes two things that are different and sort of put them side by side and relate them in some fashion. So, in my inner world, all right, reality as it is, right? People walking around doing stuff, there's that. And then laid over that, it's sort of like this fantasy um, fantasy aspect. Like, it's so hard to describe. Like, all right, if you read novels, all right, I'm a big fantasy novel guy. And that's, that's probably why it relates to fantasy. Um, I read a lot of, like, stuff with sorcerers and swordsmen and um warriors and assassins that kind of stuff taking place in sort of like medieval times right now obviously we don't live in medieval times now that falls in the realm of fantasy um there's a there's a also a thing within that realm called urban fantasy where the same concept warriors assassins wizards whatever but it takes place in modern day so you're getting like uh warriors and assassins and whatnot but they're more in modern garb um sort of balanced around modern life per se so like where back in the day, like say some like Dresden Files, I'm a big Dresden Files fan. Um, say back in the day, if you're using Gandalf, Gandalf has the big hat. He has like the big um, wizard staff, and he has like a bunch of robes and stuff on. His super long beard. All right, and then the alternative to that, modern wise, in urban fantasy, would be something like Harry Dresden, where he has like a, a small almost like fedora like hat or at least on the covers they never actually have him in a, have it in the book but <clears throat> he has a fedora and he'll have like a um a long leather duster uh jacket and like some jeans and a t-shirt and like a staff of some sort and it's sort of like you're getting the modern equivalent of that that is sort of like how it is in my inner world and that may not be the best description but that's the best i can do off the top of the head uh because i'm trying to describe something that um it's not indescribable but 
I will have to really think about it just sort of get a better description. Um, but yes, that's that's how it feels like things are so overlaid in my head. Um, like, for example, I can relate to the concept of Batman, right? Like Batman, there's Bruce Wayne and there's Batman. Those are two sides of the same person, um, two different presentations. So Bruce Wayne is the part that he shows the world. Like, oh, here's Bruce Wayne. He's this rich, spoiled playboy guy, you know, and he shows that because that's what you're that's what you were expecting to see. So he just kind of, you know, gives you that. And you don't really look hard. Like, you know, oh, here this spoiled little rich kid, right? And then there's Batman, the true person, the true persona. Um, and that guy is a lot more scary, a lot more interesting, and the darker aspects of him. Um, I feel like that that is definitely something I do. Um, I mean, not to really go into the whole personality thing, but you have like an introverted decider and an extroverted decider. And I think it's, it's a very similar concept. Um, but there's this part of me that the world see, um, my extroverted part, which is definitely the I don't want to say it's the less truer part of me because I mean it's still me but it's the part that I present to the world it's it's the watered down version that I feel that people can comprehend and it makes it easier for people to sort of digest and um, you know get along with that outer part of me, my more extroverted side. Um, and by extrovert, I just mean outside of myself. Not that I'm going to party or, you know, any of that. Is uh, pretty chill. Pretty chill. Very simple kind of guy. Um, pretty quiet, pretty keep to himself. I mean, because I'm so introverted, even my extroverted side is pretty quiet. Um, but yeah, more friendly in a way. Like um, you know, I'll I'll talk. I'm I'm not gonna initiate conversation, but if you start talking to me, I'll I'll talk. You know, um, but I'm I just more chill in the background. To be honest, I think it puts people off, but Dude, that is that is the more social part of me. Like, <laughs> yeah, like my wife will be like, "Oh, well, we, you know, we went to a family event, and you were just sitting there off your health yourself, and people think you don't want to be there, and you don't go over and say hi to people." And I'm just like, "That's the best I can give you." Um, that's all I got, man. <laughs> like. That's all I got. I'm not trying to be like antisocial, but I'm just not built like that. But anyway, yeah, that that part of myself is very chill. Um, I don't do anything really to attract attention to myself. I'm not wearing like loud T-shirts. Um, like I'm not wearing Jordans or anything like that. Like there's nothing really to bring attention to me like I'm not doing that at all like I see that with a lot of other people's extroverted um, forms like it's very attention grabbing I'm not doing that um, I am not pulling attention towards me if anything I'm deflecting attention um, very low-key very chill right and that's my extroverted um, persona in my introverted world, in my introverted persona, that's the more Batman part. Like, sometimes that guy is very dark. Um, 
especially if you happen to do something that crosses me or offends me in some form. Uh, I try not to take everything personal because I know people don't always mean stuff. And I think attention is very important. <laughs> That's conversation for another time because oddly people don't agree but I think you and doing something intentionally to offend or piss me off is different than you doing something unintentionally and I'm not I'm not really one to take something unintentionally and make a big deal about it um but inside my head oh do I have thoughts <laughs> oh do I have thoughts um It's it's a it's a lot of irritation. You, I I had heard a per, a certain personality type describe what what is what did he say? He said he said um everybody's doing everything wrong, and though outwardly. I say nothing. Inwardly, I am fuming with rage. That is very true for me. Um, I I won't say anything, but inside, I'm boiling over, and um, it is because like I can be very critical, and I try not to be, but I can be very critical. Um, people just. people people are what I call the two F's fascinating and frustrating right they're fascinating they're they're frustrating because they're so illogical about everything they do it's frustrating very frustrating but they're fascinating because they're so illogical about everything they do. It's, it's very fascinating. And, and that that is my balance. That is my balance is always teeter-tottering at all times. Uh, humans are just, they're, they're, they're interesting to me. And that, that's really a big part of my, um, that's a big part of my world perspective. Like, everything seems so fascinating to me um because i'm just sitting there like why would you do that like and it's not a not a it's not a a shit on you kind of kind of thought although it's it's often taken like that um when i tell people my wife is very in my ass about that like I don't even have to say it. And she's just looking at me, giving me shit. Um, but it is often like, why would you do that? <laughs> and then it's often like, all right, well, let's see where this goes. You know, uh, it's, I'm very self-amusing. Very self-amusing. People are the best amusement. Um, so it's, it's like, it's a little bit like being at a 24-hour comedy special. Um, and I, I know that probably sounds horrible. Like, I I don't think less of people, but I do find them very amusing. I try not to be judgmental. Unfortunately, that don't always work. Uh, I, I have to admit, there's a certain judgmental part of me, but it's, it's like you got to make judgments. Like, I know they say you shouldn't be judgmental, but you got to make judgments about people and interacting with people and if this person is a danger to you and vice versa. So you have to make judgments. At least that's my thoughts on the matter. People disagree. A to each his own. Um, but, yes, humans are just very, very amusing. Um... But, yeah, being, or at least for me, being creative, 
I, I'm just, my mindset is just so open. Like, it's, I feel like, I feel like I'm seeing reality in objective terms, right? And I say that because I've come to understand that perception is reality. So like I was mentioning about the guy I worked with earlier, how he's so closed minded his his perception of things you know um he'll tell me like oh well you're not seeing it because you're just refusing to see it you know he'll he'll discuss like racism and stuff like that and i'm just like dude um i mean racism exists sure of course but everything doesn't come back to racism like you you were fucking crazy but for him it does because he has such a narrow view of things like that's that's just his perception so to him that is how he perceives reality and um it's it's i try not to be too hard when it comes to that kind of thing because he i don't think he can help it um your perceptions are your perceptions like you're only going to be so open or so close so I can't give you too much shit about that. That's nothing you can really do. That's like saying being that mad at someone because they were short or because they were tall. That's that's just is what it is. Like there's nothing that person can do about that. So I try not to be um too hard about that. But yeah, that does that is something I tend to conflict with. Um, and that perception can, you know, it can lead you many places. And try telling someone that what they perceive is incorrect. Boy, you're going to have a hard time with that. Like, I've tried it. I've, I've given it a shot. It is very difficult. You you cannot convince somebody that what they're seeing is not correct. Um, and it, I mean, my thoughts on this is partly what led me to the five, what I call the five truths. Um, where it's like objective truth. Let me see, what was it? Objective truth. Subjective truth. Comparative truth personal truth and hidden truth those are the five different forms of truth that i came up with i believe i discussed that like in the earlier video like a few weeks back um but that was that was just something i came up with but yeah reality is perception um as far as i can see and Your perception is your perception. It's sort of like your it's just your eyesight. Like some people you might need glasses. Um, I don't really know anything about how the whole twenty twenty vision works. Like what the if you don't have that kind of vision, like where your numbers are or whatnot, but it's kinda of like that. Like when you need glasses, you need a prescription so you're able to see the world in an objective fashion you you got to get glasses you know so you can see it's not so blurry it, you can get it crystal clear that's kind of the same thing with just how you view view the world as your mindset um some people they're walking around like that you know and then like me i'm walking around just boom like everything is just open so I feel for, fortunate in that regard, um, but it, it can make it difficult, like, to communicate with other people about stuff, and because I'm so open, when speaking to people, I sound very out there, um, 
So I am very much aware that I am weird to most people, um, which I don't have a problem with, but I'm very aware of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess if you're high in creativity, you're going to be considered weird because you're just that that's just where you are on the scale like even if you have several different kinds of creatives you're you're just going to be out there um i'm trying to think anything else i wanted to cover hmm. i really should have organized this because i had all kinds of thoughts yesterday and but that is to to me that's one thing i've noticed being so open i am very hesitant to sort of organize things like i should probably write out bullet points of what i want to discuss before i come in here and i try to keep that in my head but when i put them down the paper it feels very restrictive like i'm i'm um not allowing my creativity to flow it's sort of like I want to be able to grow. I want to be able to go off on those tangents, and the reason I want to be able to go off on those tangents is because those are all parts of me. Those are all things that should be expressed in some form or fashion. Um, which, to be quite honest, can make it difficult for some people to listen to me um i mean not just nobody's really watching this but i mean even if you were talking to me in person it could make it difficult because it, you could find it very irritating i believe um because to them it probably sounds unfocused though to me it's focused because it all falls under the same umbrella of the subject um i'm just giving you a more robust a more robust vision of whatever it is i'm discussing um to a lot of people they want it streamlined you know so yeah there is that like there is a i'm very hesitant to restrict myself or organize myself too much um I mean, which is like a plus and a minus. Um, it has its upsides and downsides as far as that goes. What time is it? 6.30. All right. Uh, I guess I got to go start getting ready to start my day. Um, but that was some of my thoughts on the downside of being a creative. Um, I don't know. I, I had fun. Maybe I'll come back to this. Maybe I'll elaborate on the next one. I'm not sure. But it's very interesting. Um, and I don't want to sound negative. Like, I know I did a whole video about the downsides. But I don't want to sound negative because I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change who I am for the world. Like, I wake up in the morning loving who I am. Um, I love who I am as a person. Um, but I will say being sort of unconventional, it does make it difficult. And I will also say like, as far as the whole withering on the vine thing, that comes and goes. Um, I basically, the reason I'm up, like it's like 6.30 in the morning, but I usually get up about Four. And the reason I get up that early is because nobody's out. Nobody else is up. And that's time that I can get to myself to work on those creative um, creative aspects. You know, I'm, I'm going to paint. Um, I get up, work on my painting. Um, so now I, I get some reading in. It, it's difficult, though. It feels like I I feel cheated. I feel cheated. 
there's no way around it. I feel cheated because it's like, okay, here I have a day. I have 24 hours. It's my life. And yet I'm only getting like two to three hours to do what I really want to do. And then after that, I'm at the, I'm at the mercy of the world. You know, there's job, there's wife, there's kid, there's, you know, being a son, there's, there's just all kinds of demands on, on me, or at least that's what it feels like. Um, and really, I really just want to, I really just want to be left alone to, to express myself artistically, to study new and interesting things, to read, to write. I really just want to be left to my own, like, and yet, you can't, you can't do that. And I don't know, I, I probably sound, some people probably say I sound delusional of some sort. Uh, maybe nobody gets that, I don't know. But, yeah, it's, it can be a frustrating, um, a frustrating lifestyle and then no one can relate to <clears throat> no one can relate to you like I've tried to talk to people about it and like nobody's trying to hear that all right I gotta go um hope all one of you who <laughs> who've actually watched this uh I hope this is enjoyable. I hope this is somewhat interesting. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's nobody watching this, but it's therapeutic for me. I enjoy doing it. So with that, uh, I'm going to bid you a good day. This is just another episode of Just My Thoughts. Take it easy.